All right, so Foundations 30, Chapter 7, we are beginning today. And 7.1 is exploring characteristics of exponential functions. Okay? Exponential functions. Exponential. The root word of exponential is exponents. There it is right there, exponents. So we have a function that is characterized by an exponent, okay? The big deal is the exponent. So if we start off right away by defining or showing you sort of what an exponential function looks like, this would be the definition of an exponential function. Y equals some value, some coefficient A, all right? Some number B, which would likely be the base that we will call that, and then the variable, or the x, is in the exponent position. That's what makes it an exponential function. The x is in the exponent position. Now, there are some restrictions here. Obviously, a cannot be equal to 0, because then all of this would be 0. y equals 0 is not an exponential function. Okay. Uh, b also has to be greater than 0. So we're going to have positive uh, bases here, okay, to have this exponential function. And anything else. So yeah, and B can also be 1. Can't be 1. Right? Because if you have 1 to some power, it doesn't matter how many you multiply, how many times you multiply 1 by itself, you'll always just get 1. So if B was 1, we would end up having, you know, a horizontal line at whatever A was. Okay, so these are just kind of to the side. We won't really run into this too much, but just so you know, there are some restrictions to what we're studying here. So an example would be y equals 10 to the power of x. That's an example. And if we were writing it just like we were writing our, our kind of our format here, this a would be 1 and 10 would be the base, b there, okay? So that's, that's what it looked like, but... Um, if we're filling in all the values and all the brackets and stuff. But y equals 10 to the power of x is an exponential function. So the variable is in the exponent position. That's the big deal. Okay. Uh, some other ones. Let's. I think we should start off uh, the ones in the book. Not necessarily. Let's do. Let's do this one y equals 2 to the power of x. So on your graphing calculator, why don't you, step 1, turn it on, and hit y equals, and in the y equals space there, you want to put in 2, and then, now we have to be careful here, this is the exponent button over here. Alright, that little kind of hat, okay? And we write 2 to the power of x. Okay? Everyone see that? 2 to the power of x. That's how we're going to graph this. Now, I'm not sure what your window looks like, but if you hit zoom 6, you'll get this same thing that I'm getting right here. Zoom 6. How many of you got this graph right there? Okay, so what you want to notice for the graph of y equals 2 to the power of x is uh, a couple of things. I've zoomed in a little bit here, and we see that over to the left of 0, 0, the graph gets really, really close to the x-axis. And you might think, wow, I wonder if that ever bumps into the x-axis. Well, we'll find, we'll explore that a little bit later. And you see that it, as, it, as x gets larger here, that the graph seems to climb fairly sharply, right? <coughs> really sharp. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to explore just a table of values with you. It's very important when we're talking about graphs and functions that we're able to do a table of values, right? So we have the we have x and y there, and of course the cross, right? Very holy, it's a very holy exercise here. So let's say let's say we have x equals zero. Okay, x equals zero. Let's say we let x equal to zero. So y is going to be then two to the power of zero. Does anyone recall what 2 to the power of 0 is? Oh, 
Well, it's not zero, it's one, yes, okay? Now here's how we can check on our actual graph. This is gonna be kinda neat, okay? So let's type in x equals zero, and it'll do the work for us. We hit enter, and it'll tell us, hey, y equals one. And it'll even show you on the graph. See, zero, one is the coordinate there, okay? So y equals one, so one goes there. All right, okay, not that we need to do this, but I'm gonna just plot some points here as well as we, as we go. Okay, second function trace, that's that calculate screen. And you can do this yourself. Now let's try um, two. Let's do a value and hit two, enter. And we get four. Let's see, does that make sense? Well, if I put in two in for x, this is what I get. y equals four. So if x is two, y is four. Hey, everybody seeing that? Everybody, anybody having problems with your calculators or getting it? Okay. Okay, so what about negative one? Let's go on the other side here. So there's two, four. So negative one. Well, if x equals negative one, does anyone remember what this negative as an exponent, what that actually does, like how you would, how you could rewrite that? Yeah, this is actually the same as 1 over 2 to the power of positive 1. So that negative actually throws this whole thing down into the denominator. And so this is actually 1 half. So a negative 1 is 1 half. Let's check that on the calculator. Second function trace. Enter. And we'll put in negative 1. 0.5. See that? Okay, so the question, to answer the question I asked a few minutes ago, what happens to this graph, okay, what happens to this graph as x gets really, really, really small? You don't have to do this. I'll just do this real quick. Let me change the x minimum to negative 100, okay? That's going to make a graph. It looks really funny. And do we even, can we even see that over there? It's got, oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's the first part of the graph. I've just extended this over. Now, it looks like there's no graph there at all, right? But what happens if I have negative 100 for an x value? Negative 100 for an x value. Well, what's that going to do? Oh, my goodness. This is going to be crazy. 2 to the power of negative 100. <coughs> That's 1 over 2 to the power of 100. Now, 2 to the power of 100, that's a pretty big number, isn't it? Let's just see if our calculator will even let us do that. So, what does it say? Wow, look at this. I can put negative 100 in and look at the value. It's 7.889 and this means times 10 to the power of, it's a um, scientific notation, times 10 to the power of negative 31. So, that's like 30 zeros. I don't even know how many zeros am I? Seven. So that's pretty close to what? Pretty close to zero. All right? So the answer is, if you kept this going, it would get super, super, super close to zero, but it would never touch zero. It would never be equal to zero, and it would never be negative. So our graph, it, there's, there's what we call a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. This is an asymptote. The graph snuggles up right next to it. So here's the axis right here, and it kind of comes down, but it never actually touches. It just gets infinitely close to it. It gets closer and closer and closer, okay? So that's sort of what that graph looks like. We, we cool with that? All right, so a really small number, almost zero here. Okay. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's go, let's change that window back. I'm just going to do that real quick. What was that? A negative two, I said? Okay, negative two. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do, let's do this. Go to your window and change it to negative six. Whoa, negative, negative six, delete. And do this, uh, yeah, leave that one there. So just change your window, so hit the window button, window, and then make this a negative six, okay? Now we're gonna go to our y equals, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this, so clear it off, let us do, instead of two, let's do 
1 over 2. 1 divided by 2, or you could write 0.5 if you want, to the power of x. So make sure you use brackets if you're writing in fraction form. So what happens if we have a fraction instead of a whole number, like a you know ratio like this? Something that's between 0 and 1. What happens? Ooh. It looks just like the other one, except it's flipped around. Okay? And so that is, that's the truth here. It's exactly like the other one. And if you place them both on the graph at the same time, so if we went back and did 2 to the power of x, you would see that they are mirror images of each other. Okay. And where do they intersect? Okay, at 0, 1, the point zero, one. All right. So does anyone have any questions about that? This is y equals 1 half to the power of x, and it kind of looks like this, right? Where this is 1. Okay. And I'll just do one example with you here. I'll show you why this is a positive number, negative 2. So if we had y equals 1 half to the power of negative 2, Remember what that negative exponent does? It flips the base. So this is y equals um, 2 over 1 to the power of positive 2, or y equals 2 squared. So if we have an x value of negative 2, we end up with a y value of 4. See that? And that's why it's kind of larger on this negative side. Okay, so now what I want you to do is just to take your calculator and I want you to play around for a minute. So I want you to go to y equals and I want you to make graphs and you can change your window if you want. I want you to make graphs that look a little bit different. So like 1.5 to the power of x and do another one, negative um, well, what happens if we do negative? Boy, I don't even know. What happens if we do negative? Negative 2 to the power of x. See what that does. So just kind of play around a little bit. Challenge yourself to see if you can make some designs and stuff. Okay, here's, so here's our next one. That was the 1.5. And, oh, look at this. The negative a value. What does that negative a value do? Oh, whoops, why well, I meant it's a negative 5 or something. So there's the 1 half to the power of x, here's the 2 to the power of x, here's the 1.5 to the power of x, and then if a is negative, you'll notice that it flips everything to the, the other way there. So this one, y equals 2 to the power of x, and y equals negative 2 to the power of x, they're flips, they flip about the x-axis. Okay, so just go ahead and make some exponential functions, make a little design, change your window around if you want, and uh, just take a moment to explore that. If we look at our formula here, right, for an exponential function, and we talked about the base, what the base does, if the b is greater than 1, okay, if the b is greater than 1, which if we go back to, I'm going to clear a bunch of this stuff, okay, clear, um, clear, 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 clear. Okay, so we did 2, right? 2 to the power of x. What about, what about 5 to the power of x? What happens there? Well, let's see. The first one's going to be 2 to the power of x, and then 5 to the power of x is very similar, except, whoa, it races up really quickly. Why would that be? Well, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 5 to the power of 1 is 5. So already at x equals 1, this graph has a point that's much higher. 2 to the power uh, of 2 is 4. 5 to the power of 2 is 25. So already at 2, it's racing up there. So as b gets larger, the exponential function sort of comes narrower. Okay, And it actually gets to uh, approaches 0 a little bit quicker too. Okay, But it's narrower. And then some more. But notice that it always passes through 